everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name's Glenn, also known as Astro Bloke. I'd just like to firstly give a shout out to all my subscribers. I'm um, a little bit humbled by the fact I've got over 700 subscribers. So um, it's really nice to feel that there's that many people following me and uh, I'm hoping that my videos are helping some people. That's my main aim really, to so share the hobby but also um, share what I've learned and what I know so that I can hopefully help others enjoy the hobby the same. Eight months ago I decided to build an observatory in my garden and I wanted to do it on a budget because when I first looked at all the different kinds of observatories they were so expensive I was a bit shocked. So I managed to actually build one with a roll off roof for just under £800 and I've got a video and I'll put the link above me um, to that uh, initial build. I've had quite a lot of response on that um, and a lot of questions have come up uh, where maybe I didn't go into quite enough detail or show certain specific things that I'd built. So today's video is to just really fill in those gaps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide the roof off and we're going to go over some little specific parts that I know people have asked questions on. So hopefully it will answer them and help you with your own builds. Right, let's get on with it. So as you can see, it's a lovely light roof, very easy to uh, take off. There's no, no weight to it really at all. In fact, it's uh, extremely light. Um, I'm in a sheltered position, so I don't have any problems with high wind. As I say, this has been through the whole winter with snow, high winds, ice, loads of rain. Um, it's been absolutely fine, no problems at all. Right, I'm gonna take you into the observatory um, and we're gonna have a closer look at some things. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you some of the build parts so that they're a bit clearer to you and um, that, that uh, weren't in the first video. So this is the rail that I purchased um, and this is fitted to the side of the shed. Now it wouldn't screw in because it's too heavy. So what I've got is a bolt, a coach bolt going through the skin where the um, observatory is reinforced and then it's bolted on here. And then um, it runs all the way along and actually sits just shy of this edge here, but it's actually supported by the structure outside. Let's close this door. So this up right here is the main support for it, and then we've got another support at the other end. Now, the um, weight of the roof is not great at all, so it doesn't need to be over the top. The cuts that were made on the actual observatory, and I'm just gonna jump up a little step ladder here. Oh, before I do that, let me just show you the other side of this coach bolt. So there's the outside of the coach bolt, and I've just put some silicon around it just to help um, should there be any problems with water ingress. And this is a channel that normally water wouldn't get into. And I drilled some holes so that if any water did make its way in, it would run out. So talking about the rail itself, um, you want a very slight uh, incline away from the observatory. So the reason for that is obviously rainfall. If it's totally flat or slightly angled towards the observatory, water's gonna run in. Now I've put some silicon blobs here and I've sealed the uh, wood in, but I did have an issue. Because the uh, rail was wider than the wood I actually had, I ended up putting another piece of wood and sandwiching it onto the side so it made it wide enough. What that did was it meant that um, between the two bits of wood the water would use capillary action and work its way into the observatory. And that's why there's a, a cut out here and that stops that from happening. Um, and also, as you can see, plenty of silicon just to stop any water getting in. This is one of the cuts that I made um, I worked it out um, roughly with a piece of wood, a smaller piece of wood. I just cut down, got the angle, and then, and then just uh, literally cut that with a saw and across. It's very easy to cut. And then just made sure that the angle um, was slightly down away from the observatory. And then 
that obviously helps. So I put this in because I, I, the plastic isn't that strong and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't too much weight on it. You can't screw the wood into the side of this. It's not really that strong. And as I say, I used a coach bolt at the other end to secure the end of the rail and then there. The rail is three meters in length, so I had to join two bits together. And the same goes with the wood. My wood wasn't long enough. And as you can see over there, um, I've um, butted them together and they've got um, steel plates either side, just holding it together. And obviously the rail on the top helps secure that as well. So on the original uh, walls of the observatory, this is the original height. You've got some locating lugs that stick up for the roof parts to go into. So I literally just used a wood saw and sawed straight across. I put a bit of wood, clamped it on so I had a level and I just sawed straight across, did it at the back and at the other side as well. And as you can see, that what that done was give me a nice flat area so that the roof could slide on and off because if you had the different levels, it would mean the roof would have to be a lot higher and it'd make it harder to um, seal it from the weather. On the first video at the end, I've got some links to the um, stuff that I bought and this rail is 62 millimetres wide and um, it's galvanised so and it's been brilliant I mean it's really overkill for the job um, so um, you don't need to go that big but I mean it's never going to wear out basically. One small point to mention about the roof is when you do cut it off the um, original hinges have a pin that sits in the top of the roof and one that sits at the bottom and you've got this uh, sort of plastic hinge here so when the roof slides off obviously it hasn't got the top hinge so you need to buy yourself a small hinge and screw it on to support the top of the door um, as I say I've got them on both sides and uh, that's the uh, only thing you really need to add there because you do lose the top hinge as regards of the supports, they don't really need to be as heavy duty as the ones I've used here. These are fence posts that I bought. Um, it was a good size to use because you get the fence post bases that you can get. And these, although you can buy the ones that spike into the ground, you can buy ones that you can concrete in. This wasn't really required for this. It's not holding a heavy roof at all. So all that's under here, it's a flat plate. I'm just going to brush this back. It's a flat plate and these are about six inch long um, heavy duty uh, marquee uh, pins basically and they're just hammered into the ground and it holds everything nice and securely. As I say it's not supporting a very heavy roof at all so it's not required to really go over the top with that. A little bit more detail about the wheels and how I attach them to the roof. Um, there's a lip here but that isn't to screw in the bottom there that would obviously this would tilt too much so I've used some angles and some blocks to attach the wood to this edge and I've done the same the other side and then the wheels are just screwed underneath and this gives enough uh, depth of the wheel to lift the roof up on the rail to clear the sides of the observatory so I tried to keep the gap um, as small as possible um, so that it was easier to weather seal it. I didn't want a massive gap. I wanted some ventilation, but I didn't want it to be enormous. I've seen some interesting discussions online um, regarding insulation of your observatory, whether you should do it or not. Some people say that if you heat it up too much, you're going to get heat haze and it's going to spoil your, uh, your viewing, um, etc. So, um, because this was a plastic shed, one of my main concerns was condensation. Um, so, I felt that good ventilation and keeping it at as uh, an ambient temperature as possible was the best solution. And to be fair, it's actually worked perfectly. So, this, was, this is just the uh, foil insulation, nothing over the top. And just some... Um, you, guys, God, you couldn't see that, could you? So this is just some foil insulation. Uh, I used double-sided tape to hold it on, nothing, nothing fancy. And it just is enough to keep the um, outside temperatures uh, away so it doesn't get too cold. 
and it doesn't get too hot. As soon as the roof is off, it takes minutes for this observatory to reach the same temperature as outside. And I've never had any issues with the um, a heat haze coming off of it or seeing or anything. Especially in the time of the, wind, um, of the summer where it could get hot. I mean, it doesn't get dark until way late. So if you open it early enough and let it cool down, you're not gonna have any issues. One of the things I did add to this was um, a heat source and ventilation. I'll just quickly show you those. So on the ventilation side, I've got um, these fans that extract the air and they're, they're actually operated by solar panel that's on the roof. Now, um, one of them I bought, I bought them both off of um, eBay. I think they come from China. They weren't expensive. Uh, one of them actually stopped working, so I need to get another one. Um, it was a bit unfortunate, but um, there was a bit of wind, and it blew the uh, it blew it off basically the uh, solar panel, and it hit the floor, and the solar panel doesn't work anymore. The fan's fine, but it damaged the solar panel. As I say, I think they were about 12, 12 pounds, something like that. Not a lot. Um, so I need to get another one, and I'll I'll sort that um, so that I've got one at either end. So at the moment there isn't one that end, but. Obviously when the sun's out and it's uh, getting warm, this helps flow the air out. I've got two thermostat plugs that I have down here. And they're basically, one is set for if the temperature goes below um, 10 degrees, it comes on and it heats up a little greenhouse heater. So those bar heaters, they don't give out much heat, um, but they are perfect for just keeping a room from frost um, and just keeping a nice ambient temperature and with the insulation it's worked really well the other so that one's set to come on if it goes below 10 degrees and this one if it goes below above um, 17 i've got a fan there on a switch and that will draw in air at the bottom so we've got air coming in and the air blowing out of the top and I've found that the, uh, and you've also got the gap at the top anyway um, even though it's covered with the rubber flap um, the air is able to flow around freely and I've actually found that with the good ventilation and a little bit of insulation and a little bit of heat source no matter what the weather's doing it stays bone dry in here and um, it works really well so that's the power source for everything uh, for my telescope the rig the camera and everything um, and that stays in there so that it doesn't get um, any rain, moisture or rain on it and uh, my screen that I use for my computer in here is actually a TV screen um, and when, I've, um, when I'm imaging and once it's all running I turn the screen off and I've got this all weather cover for it um, just got it off Amazon it was really 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 good it pulls down covers over the top and that stops any moisture getting on the screen and causing any problems and you can see there that the thermostat plug it's just gone up to 17.1 degrees in here and that fan now has come on at the bottom there just to keep the air flowing here nice and good another little addition i made to the observatory is these foam pad uh, flooring tiles really nice i have dropped a couple of things because i'm clumsy sometimes and um, i swear to god this has saved me so rather than it hitting a hard plastic floor hits this nice foam floor and uh, saves it from breaking. So a couple of things to consider uh, before you actually put your bars in and that lot is the height of everything. Make sure that the roof is going to be able to clear the sides of your observatory and also think about the height of your pier or your tripod. I had a tripod originally with um, uh, a centre pier extension on it to get it high enough because the walls on this um, are quite high and um, it would be extremely difficult to mod this in a way that the part of the walls moved away with it. I'm sure it could be done but um, for me it was just the roof so I made sure that this was going to be high enough um, that I can do my imaging. One point to uh, mention is make sure your rails go back far enough that you can go past the end of the observatory. So I've got that rubber flap there and that needs to go outside and then come back a little bit and that then makes sure that you're sealed. I made a little mark on the side here of the bar 
See if I can show you that. So that I know where the wheel lines up and everything is uh, central for the roof. <coughs> so, that um, hopefully covers some of the finer details of the build that I didn't cover in the first video. It's been an excellent performer um, all through the winter. I've had no issues with damp, I've had no issues with condensation, I've had no issues with rain getting in or any problems at all. The um, convenience that this has given me has been enormous. So I may look at the forecast and it may be a bit iffy. Well, you, you used to come out, you know, sort of 20 minutes to set up and then it would cloud over and then you'd be like, well, do I leave it up? Do I put it away? And I've done it where I've put it away and then it's cleared and I've bought it out and then it's clouded over. <clears throat> Drives you absolutely mad. The beauty of this is I can come out and slide the roof off and I'm ready to go within five minutes tops. Not even that. I mean, it's literally switch it on and get going. And the same goes as if it clouds over. I can just literally come out and put the roof back on. It's brilliant. So the convenience that gives you is, in, is, is massive and it really does help your hobby loads because you've got everything permanently set up as well. So there's a lot of, lot, lot of stages that you go through. You don't need to go through every night. So I don't need to polar align every time I want to um, image. I may check my polar alignment every sort of month or so only because I like doing it. And then most of the time when I check it, it's, it's spot on. So I don't need to worry about it. My final plan with this um, build is actually to make the uh, roof electric and automated. That's what I would really like to do. A fairly big project. I'm thinking about ideas of how I can mechanise it so that what I want to be in a position of is that I can remote in and the roof comes off, everything comes on, I can start imaging and if the weather should change everything will shut down and the roof will come back on. So obviously need a weather station to uh, monitor the weather condition. That's the dream. Uh, whether or not I'll finally get it done on this, I don't know. Um, but uh, I think I will, because I do like a project. So, and if I do, I will do a video on it and show you what I've done. So I hope this has been of help to you. Um, as always, if there are any questions or things I've not answered for you, please put them in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer you. And um, I want to wish you all clear skies. Thank you ever so much for supporting me and uh, well, see you next time.